indie games, and AAA. For years, the masses have debated which is better than the other, and by the masses, I of course mean this guy. What a weirdo. Indie games have been on a constant increase in popularity ever since the early 2000s. <laughs> you know, that time when I didn't exist yet. Indie games, or independent games, are the product of development studios separate from the big companies, and are usually developed by much smaller teams and sometimes even a single developer. While I try to play games of all different kinds, when given a choice between the two, I will just about always choose to play an indie game over a AAA release. And this isn't just me trying to be a contrarian and knock on AAA releases, they can be great generation defining titles that I love. Games like Mario Galaxy, Spider-Man PS4, A Link Between Worlds, undeniably some of my all time favorites, and they're AAA games. But there's just something about that homemade feel that indie games have that's always had a hold on me, always made me want to play them. And that's what we're going to be discussing today. Why do I love indie games so much? And hey, a quick few things that I should say before we start. I'm not a game dev, I'm 15 years old. When I talk about the game industry, take it all with a grain of salt, I really don't know what I'm talking about. And please do keep in mind, all of the opinions discussed in this video are just that. Opinions. If you don't agree with me, who cares? Moving on. To really answer the question of why I love indie games so much, I think we first have to look at how an indie game comes to be. See, because indie games are made entirely independent from the big companies, their funding can be somewhat unreliable. In other words, most indie devs are as broke as my old 3DS. And that's when a little thing I like to call begging rears its head. Kickstarter is the go-to website for indie devs. It's a site that lets any creator create a donation drive for their project and anyone who wants to support the project can do it by donating whatever amount of money they want. Sometimes the creator will add rewards for reaching different stretch goals or maybe a donor will receive their own reward for donating a specific amount of money. It may sound odd, but I think this, even if a small one, is part of why I love indie games so much. This can create a community before the game is even released, creating relationships between players. Funding the game yourself makes the experience of finally playing it a lot more personal. You're a part of the reason that game can even exist. That game has a little part of you in it. I was looking for my spleen. The hype surrounding that game's release date feels so much more intense because of how you contribute to the game's development on a personal level. And of course, a staple of indie games is some type of stylized graphics. I feel like it's become more common for people to be concerned with how realistic a game looks, how many polygons a character model has, how realistic all of the fluid and cloth and hair simulations are, and yeah, that's cool and all. But that type of aesthetic has really just stopped interesting me. Ever since the PS4 or Xbox One era, I feel like trying to mimic the real world as much as possible has just really lost its luster. It just kind of became another thing that everybody could do. That's why I will take a game that looks like this over this any day of the week. Believe it or not, I really like art. Arting is easily one of my favorite pastimes, right behind playing video games, talking about video games, arson, and sitting. So you could probably guess that the games with the more artsy fartsy art direction tend to catch my eye. Now it's not like a AAA game lacks the ability to have stylized graphics, just look at Sonic Mania, a game made in order to return Sonic to an earlier time both in gameplay and art style, and it's a AAA release. But then you see a short hike, and Everything in this game is designed to complement the game's absolutely gorgeous, low-resolution, low-poly art style. And it's just beautiful. I could just sit here watching it, and I don't think I'd get tired of it. And there was this one other game. I know it was a real masterpiece with some truly beautiful artwork, but I just can't put my finger on its name. Obviously, I'm talking about Cuphead. This game came out in 2017 and... <laughs> wow. Words do not even begin to describe how pretty this game is. It wasn't enough to just make it have a pretty hand-drawn art style. It wasn't enough to use the traditional method of 2D animation that hasn't been seen in years. Apparently, the creators of Cuphead decided that remortgaging their houses in order to fund this absolutely beautiful game was enough. That's where they drew the line, and, and just fucking look at it! The total art loser in me is both absolutely swooning at how drop-dead gorgeous every single part of this game is, while at the same time dying internally at just imagining how exhausting this must have been. I just... you don't get this out of AAA games. I dare you to find a AAA game that's this pretty. But do you know what else about indie games is pretty? Thank you. 
music. Indie game music, a lot like graphics, tends to be both beautiful and very stylized. Now, credit where credit is due. AAA games can have some absolutely amazing standout tracks, for example, nearly every song from the Legend of Zelda series is straight up iconic. But the issue here is that the music for every big AAA title has just started to sound bland to me. Each new game is accompanied by some big, sweeping orchestral soundtrack. And amazing as it may sound, I know exactly what I'm getting before I even put the disc in. But when it comes to an indie game, saying that the soundtrack's genre, theme, or even general fucking sound is going to be a toss-up is probably the biggest understatement that I've ever said. You can take a game like Shovel Knight, with its music sounding like a mix between that retro SNES-inspired style with some sort of medieval vibe, I don't know how to describe it. But then you move on to a game like Hyperlight Drifter, and you get a completely different sound, some sort of 80s synth, which fits perfectly with this game. And you move on to yet another indie game, Undertale, a masterpiece of music. Each song is memorable from... to... And, of course... Like I said, it's not that music in AAA games is bad, it can be great. But there's something so much more intriguing about the unique directions that indie game composers take with their music. I love not knowing when I'm going to get out of a game's soundtrack, and I never have a clue what I'm getting from an indie soundtrack. But when it really comes down to it, what makes an indie game more fun than a AAA title? Well, AAA games tend to play it a lot safer than indie games, and generally, I don't think that's the fault of the companies themselves. Being a big name in the industry like Nintendo, Sony, or Microsoft, you have restrictions that need to be put in place. You have investors with demands that need to be satisfied, you have deadlines that need to be met, you have a legacy and reputation to uphold. And if your latest console selling exclusive doesn't rise to meet expectations, you can imagine that there are going to be some serious issues going forward. What if investors pull out? What if your fans start to lose faith? I can't even begin to imagine the amount of stress put on game devs to deliver an experience that people see as passable. And I think this creates a fear within the AAA industry. This fear is, what I believe, keeps AAA executives from really experimenting and risking just about anything. Indie games, on the other hand? Entirely different story. Indie devs don't have any investors that are constantly breathing down their necks, urging them into making better money-making decisions. This lack of outside influence gives indie devs the opportunity to be so much more creative and different and inventive. So much less of the indie dev's creative vision has to be sacrificed when you compare it to a AAA dev's vision. I absolutely adore seeing new ideas in video games. Innovation is such an exciting part of a new game releasing, and I just feel like that's something that can be found in a greater abundance in an indie game than a AAA. Just take a look at Celeste, a platformer. Probably the most basic genre of video game that there is. Celeste is just about the furthest thing from a basic platformer that you could find. It takes the basic idea of platformer, jump from platform to platform, but then it brings an absolutely amazing story to the table with such solid mechanics that are integrated into gameplay seamlessly. Then you look at Hollow Knight, another platformer, but also a Metroidvania. How did Hollow Knight change the formula and innovate? It designs absolutely brutal combat that rewards a player for perfecting their fundamentals. It puts the player into a dark and depressing world with such interesting characters. I love the brilliant ideas that these games and so many others have brought about. Sure, maybe when they made Super Mario Bros. on the NES, they invented the wheel, but games like Hollow Knight and Celeste demonstrate how we've perfected it. So why do I like indie games so much? I don't fucking know. Obviously, there are a lot of reasons that I love indie games. The absolute freedom that indie devs are allowed just keeps indie games from getting stale to me, which sometimes does happen with AAA. And like I said, I love AAA games. They're some of my all-time favorites. I am never going to forget the first time I opened and played Breath of the Wild. But when it comes down to it, I really do prefer indie games. Hopefully I explained well enough why. If not, I guess I gotta delete my channel. It's over. I tried. Do you agree with me and you enjoy indie games more than AAA? If not, I'd love to hear why. I'm completely open to having a discussion in the comments, I love hearing differing opinions on video games. Like, comment, subscribe, 
ring that bell, all that crap that YouTubers are constantly reminding you to do, so I know I don't have to, but I'm going to anyways. And I gotta go do something productive with my life, so I will see you later. Go away, I already left.